for students to build hypotheses and learn and reject hypotheses or not. Then when they complete all this, then okay, you graduate this section. You graduate small, small, small sections. Huh? Okay, so I also got time now, Dr. Uma. Yes, yeah, we have, we have time. <laughs> Yeah. Because okay. this is something uh, new, uh, this is something new for us, and pro uh, it will be beneficial for instructors to, uh, for educators to look at this. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So this was a study that uh, I've been doing for several years actually, and uh, recently published in this uh, book. And this is a chapter in book. I've analyzed from two thousand thirteen graduates in, in actually these are counseling graduates. So. They are not really exposed to technology, don't have to expose to technology. So through the years, you can see that they have changed their use of technology. Okay, YouTube is very, is, uh, very familiar to them, lah, but video lectures, okay. Social media, you see they have actually now from Facebook right, in 2013, they actually reduced nowadays, some students don't use Facebook at all. They use instead, Instagram has been going up and WhatsApp, which was, hardly used in 2013 it's a very prevalent uh, social media now discussion tools mm, whatsapp and uh, skype has totally gone down when long ago at least more than half students use skype now nobody use but if you ask today i think zoom and google Meet. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so just to give you an idea technology will always change what students use okay and what we use as lecturers will change Okay, because technology is always advancing and updates, 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 especially during this time. All the things have been updated. So you have to be aware that as lecturers, we need lifelong learning skills. As students, they also need lifelong learning skills so that when they see, oh, this tool has changed, they will know how to troubleshoot and go about using it. So that's, that's one of the messages that I wanted to show you that Things have changed, but now for emergency, <laughs> we have to think of other issues. Okay, we have to think about whether all our students have laptop access, internet access, whether they have special needs, or whether they are so stressed up because some of them may have family members who have been, you know, impacted by the COVID nineteen virus. Who have got sick, some have um, even passed away. Okay, so we have to be aware and be careful of how we deal with our students. That means our expectations may change. And that is remote learning during emergency. All right. Uh, so that's so why one of uh, the themes for the webinar is actually uh, on the wellness, you know, um, how are you going to handle stress? How are you going to manage time? Uh, I mean, if uh, you know, as, a, as someone with family, how are you going to do it? And, uh, you know, so we have uh, a few, to, uh, a few uh, speakers on how to manage your well-being, especially mm. during, uh, you know, fully online learning. Mm. Yeah. So that's one mm. of the issues that we are concerned about as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So even lecturers also, uh, <laughs> we yeah. also stress up, right? <laughs> yeah. Because the demands from the students are 24 hours a day. Uh, so how to do that? Uh? Uh, tomorrow I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But then there's a lot of changes. So assessment grades, a new normal is needed for assessment also. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think uh, that's um, all I have to say. Okay. So it's assessment not assessing the students but for the students to learn assessment so that students can learn with them with them we learn together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we we have a question uh from the panel uh, sorry um from the participants here um is 30 minutes online engagement with with students enough so how, how do you know uh, you know i think again i would say it's not about the minutes but yeah i would like to hear from you how do you determine how much time uh, you know should we uh, you know engage with students when you're hmm. teaching online? Okay, if I take the the principle that uh, uh, is used in multimedia education, uh, videos. How long can students be engaged on videos? <laughs> Adult students. <laughs> I was the more say five minutes, minutes the more. Say three minutes. <laughs> Cannot unless they are very highly motivated students like like you like all of you here. <laughs> you're all here because you want to hear me tell you something. You want to learn, and then after that, if you're not satisfied, you're going to complain. <laughs> so I mean, 
If you're highly motivated, yes, but your students, you have to see, are they highly motivated or not? Okay. So if not, three minutes, five minutes, the most. So what do you do? So that means your sessions, your face-to-face -face session using video conferencing tools, you have to stop, stop, stop. Okay, maybe every five minutes. I'm not good now because I only stopped you at how many minutes when I asked you the question, the poll. Okay, but that's because uh, Dr. Uma is here. <laughs> <laughs> mm. and we also have lack of time yeah, so, yeah that means you know when you're doing a live teaching so yeah, yeah so your tips would be every few minutes and then uh so that's when you you suggested the polls you know mm. uh, you suggested uh the certain apps that we can use to keep mm. the students engaged and we also need to do this check-in with the students mm. um you know whether they are uh you know whether they are listening to us and, and mm. watching or is it just you know or do they just disappear from the screen mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So that is the, the key. That means you plan uh, every how many minutes. This is the question that I will ask them. Either they respond to chat or they do my poll or they do an activity. So right. some uh, some lecturers have, have done that. That means they only talk about 10 minutes. Okay, do activity and then later we come back again for another mm -hmm. webinar or meeting. Okay, and then we continue 10 minutes and then we do another activity. Mm -hmm. So that may be the way that you have to do another i think the, the certain apps have actually this breakout rooms uh, mm. so from breakout rooms you actually uh, you know you can focus into a smaller group of um, students so probably that is also uh, another yeah. technique so if, again as you mentioned the keyword was planning you know how do you plan your online lesson so um you know uh, we have about another eight more minutes um so just um how would you plan to enter uh, how would you plan i mean before uh, i mean from your point of view before you start your lesson how do you plan your engagement? Do you like, you know, write it down and say, okay, this is when I put in my poll or this is when I, I do this. Do you do that? Yes, I do that. <laughs> yes. So okay. I, I look through. Actually, I think um, maybe the advantage is I myself cannot sit still. I'm also a visual person. So I know it's you're so boring my lecture. You know, when I look through my slides, now, I was like, oh, okay. it doesn't look interactive at all. So what would I do? Where would I put... Um, but I'm also limited by time, but I made a mistake. Eh? So I thought I would take longer on this. <laughs> but actually, we're, fast, we're going fast. Eh? So um, I, I will pause and say, okay, now it's time for interaction. By this time, by this slide, I need some interaction. By this part, I need some interaction. Or this one is heavy, I need to get them to do this. So things like that. Yeah, I do plan. So you see, in, in a face-to-face -face, uh, class, we probably can do things on the fly. Yes. But it doesn't mm. apply when you're conducting lessons online. Do you agree? I agree. When I'm doing face-to-face, -face, I can see whether you're getting sleepy or whether you're... <coughs> you know, you, we can call the student's name. Now, everybody is going to switch off their camera <laughs> and say that it is... You know, I need to switch off because I don't have the bandwidth in my in my house. I have limited access here. Okay, so then everybody is going to switch off, and you don't know what they're doing. Or switch off going, you know, bancho kopi or whatever. <laughs> so since you can't see their face, you have to anticipate, okay. and getting to know your learners is one of them. All right. Okay. Okay. So there's one last question. Uh, for an hour face-to-face -face class, is it the same for online learning? Okay. So this is another famous uh, question. Everybody's asking. So now I'm doing this face-to-face. -face. Now, how do I do this online? Do I do I maintain that one hour? Do I maintain the two hours? You know, people still go by the numbers. So what would be your best take on this? I think um, number one, one hour lecture is going to take much more than one hour preparation for you. Okay, definitely. The time that we used to teach online, I mean face to face, one hour, we prepared so much because we, we know our stuff. Now we still know our stuff, but the, the platform has changed and the uh -huh. students has, have changed. So it's going to take a lot of differences. So if I have prepared previously one hour lecture notes, okay, uh -huh. I can present in the class for one hour and then after that, I can ask them to break up. Now I probably need to change and mm -hmm. I have done that. So I have changed everything. So a lot, I have given more uh, students responsibility to create their own.
materials okay because uh, and and then i check on them so i find that that is a better way they present and and their friends are more interested to listen to their friends presenting rather than Chegu present ah you listen to Chegu all the time so uh, i have changed my method a lot so so you're getting students uh, more involved uh, in the teaching and the learning process mm -hmm. now you know instead of them so that when they do something so then they are engaged and they can, and then you can see them participating in your session correct yeah okay mm -hmm. so um i think uh, that's all uh, the mm -hmm. time that we have now i think we have uh, it looks good i think we have covered uh, most of the questions is there anything else uh, uh, associate professor dr dorothy that you would like to uh, you know just uh, you know do a, a simple a, a wrap up yeah to the session so I, I think most importantly is think about how you would, you know, if you were the student, how would you behave? How would you react? If, if I am active, especially in TVET, actually, our students in TVET have always been active doing things, right? In the bank kill, in, the, in wherever, they're always active doing things. And then suddenly now we are asking them to sit down and listen because we cannot access the pain kill, because we cannot uh, do a lot of things face to face with them. We cannot, you know, let them and see their reaction. So now we have to think of how to engage them. And that's where online tools, there are many ways or many types of tools. So my, my, my uh, challenge to you as instructors in TVET, Okay, in Tibet organization institutions is you already have the technical capabilities. You already have the support, okay, from the Jabatan, okay, from this division where Dr. Uma is in, and they're giving you a lot of support, all the all the uh, webinars that are coming up. <laughs> okay, go ahead. And I'm sure and I'm very confident that our Tibet graduates and our Tibet lecturers are the best in technology because the first word already is technical <laughs> so mm -hmm. you're already technology inclined and you're already preparing for industrial revolution 4.0 we are already there okay and you are preparing your students to be there okay so uh, good job on it continue doing your best and i'm sure you'll be a success all right, all right. thank you all right. So um, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Dorothy. So thank you, everyone, uh, participants, especially. Thank you for your encouraging questions. So we appreciate you being here. So your next session will be tomorrow at 11.30 uh, a.m. Um, and um, mm. you will be sharing on establishing a sense of community and creating an online presence when teaching online okay so uh sedikit iklan untuk besok uh, uh, dan selepas ini pukul 3 kita akan continue dengan uh, slot pada pukul 3 setting up your digital classroom at home uh, to enable online teaching by prof uh, abdul karim alias from usm all right and tomorrow we'll be uh starting a bit earlier uh at 9 a.m on how to make teaching work effective lesson planning um by john bergman uh one of uh, an accomplished uh flipped uh learning expert and then after that remember when uh, when, when dr dorothy just now covered the instructional uh, method of uh, planning your lesson so um the second session at uh, at 11 uh, sorry at three o'clock we will be discussing on how to plan your lessons uh, as she mentioned we already have the technical skills and uh, we already know our stuff but how do we do it online i think that's what uh, lecturers need to know so we'll be sharing that tomorrow so thank you again uh, for such an informative session uh, so thank you everyone. So I'll see you all at 3 p.m. Uh, Prof. Uh, sorry, Dr. Zana Lasha will be moderating the next session. Thank you again. I'll see you tomorrow, Dr. Dorothy. Okay, thank bye you. Bye. <laughs>Uh, okay all right so just a bit of uh announcement uh this is for the participants yeah so dr asha will be zana asha will be a doctor <laughs> dr nana will be um taking over okay Assalamualaikum dan uh, salam sejahtera. Hai, jadi izinkan saya mencuri sedikit beberapa minit untuk saya explain uh, menjelaskan mengenai dengan uh, sijil. 
Jadi sebelum itu saya minta uh, kita cuba saya akan cuba uploadkan sijil. Karena banyak banyak orang yang bertanya, jadi uh, kita pun hanya mendapat persetujuan uh, semalam. Jadi kita, saya dah cuba letakkan dalam uh, website webinar. Yeah. Uh, so hold on eh. Okay, alright. Jadi kalau uh, first of all dokumen ini telah pun kita upload ke webinar um, self.edu.my/backslash webinar dan uh, dia menjelaskan uh, dengan sedikit serba sedikit mengenai dengan cara kita nak mengeluarkan uh, sijil, okay. Jadi so, konsep webinar ni agak unik kerana slotnya adalah satu jam. Uh, selalunya kalau kita buat sijil kehadiran dia one day ataupun few, few hours. Tapi kita ni one hour. Jadi kita tak bolehlah keluarkan sijil one hour sebagai sijil penuh dan you boleh claim sebagai sijil. Eh. Jadi uh, the whole idea is that dia macam uh, dia adalah kita keluarkan apa yang kena sebagai nota pengesahan kehadiran. That means setiap kali tuan-tuan dan puan-puan menghadiri uh, webinar, tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekiranya uh, memenuhi syarat-syarat yang saya akan terangkan kemudian, sekiranya tuan-tuan dan puan-puan memenuhi syarat-syarat berikut, tuan-tuan uh, dan puan-puan akan menerima satu NPK kita panggil, uh, nota pengesahan kehadiran melalui email tuan-tuan dan puan-puan. Okay, so kalau you dapat email tu, that means you layaklah. Uh, you to, you, you attendance telah dikira sebagai aktif. Kalau tak dapat, tak ada lah. Uh, jadi uh, setiap kali you lihat satu slot, you akan dapat satu email. Eh. So proses ini hanya dikhususkan untuk warga JPPKK saja. So this is only for JPPKK, uh, only for for our lecturers who are who are trying to to, to use this, who is going to use this as part and parcel of their uh, training uh, capacity. Yeah. Uh, setiap kali peserta menghadiri slot webinar, I'm reading ya. Eh, uh, Webex akan merakam durasi masa tuan-tuan mengikut slot. So this is Webex. Dia ada di satu algoritma yang automatically dia akan uh, uh, record how much time you have been online. Eh. Dan ini dikenali sebagai durasi kehadiran DK dan ianya dilaporkan dalam berapa minit. So for example, the thing is one hour, you are in 30 minutes, you are in you know 45 minutes and so on, right? Yang kedua, nah yang ketiga, okay, bagi memastikan peserta webinar beri fokus sepenuhnya kepada web, kepada webinar, uh, Webex, satu mekanisme dalam Webex telah diwujudkan. Jadi banyak orang kata, alright, attend online ni, uh, on saja, you attend dan you boleh dapat sijil. Jadi Webex cuba lah, Webex cuba untuk uh, justify uh, apa yang dimaksudkan dengan attention, pay attention. Jadi cara Webex uh, uh, define attention ni adalah you gunakan laptop, right? You gunakan laptop untuk view Webex. Uh, jangan buat kerja lain. Kalau you buat kerja-kerja lain, uh, multitasking eh, you ada buat kerja online lain macam typing ataupun menjawab uh, WhatsApp ataupun uh, whatever, Webex menganggap tuan-tuan dan puan-puan tidak beri perhatian. Okay. Uh, ini adalah algorithm yang Webex telah wujudkan. Eh. So make sure you, you you when you watch wherever you're watching, uh, you jangan buat multitasking atau nak buat pun a small percentage sahaja kita allow. Ya, yeah? uh, so that itu pun kita akan ambil kira sebagai satu set, satu uh, mekanisme untuk menentukan bahawa tuan-tuan dan puan-puan uh, memberi uh, apa kata uh, per -per perhatian lah yang penuh kepada uh, the, the webinar. So ini dikenali sebagai nisbah uh, tumpuan kehadiran atau NTK dan ia dikesan melalui algoritma terdapat dalam Webex. So this is Webex, kita menggunakan Webex. Ia dapat mengesan kerja-kerja multitasking oleh peserta webinar seperti itulah, menggunakan Office atau Excel, whatever work you're doing. So dia tak allow you to multitask atau baca FB, menjawab WhatsApp. Even though WhatsApp tu dah kerja, 
uh, pejabat ya yeah? uh, so dia, dia tak allow so make sure you have your handphone ready dan sebagainya right concentrate on the webinar make sure the screen you tak buka anything else ya yeah? and just the thing on the screen saja so now kedua-dua mekanisme ini DK dan NTK akan digunakan sebagai syarat bukti kehadiran so uh, we are di BIPD kita dah bersetuju untuk guna pakai dua-dua komponen ni uh, if you mencapai uh, minimum requirement yes minimum requirement you are layak untuk uh, mendapat um, di apa nota pengesahan uh, kehadiran yang akan emailkan pada tuan-tuan dan puan-puan okey so bagi untuk itu um, apa tujuan apa dia peranan W apa NPK ni tadi jadi kita masih dalam perbincangan uh, katalah tuan-tuan dan puan dapat satu NPK berapa NPK akan qualify kepada satu sijil itu belum kita kenal pasti lagi mungkin 3 NPK equivalent to satu sijil atau 6 NPK equivalent to satu sijil uh, kehadiran uh, satu untuk satu sehari ya so yang tu masih lagi dalam perbincangan jadi dalam uh, sementara ni saya galakkan tuan-tuan puan-puan collect as much NPK as possible ya yeah. jadi untuk peringatan macam mana nak get a successful NPK ini dah dia perlu menulis uh, bagi memastikan webinar berjaya you must make sure of these three things ya yeah. menulis nama dan institusi yang tepat because if your name is not there your NPK uh, ia takkan keluar dengan jelas ya yeah. yang kedua memastikan uh, kehadiran DK tu at least 50 minutes Kita bagi 10 minutes tu untuk you, you know, open online, tak dapat line dan sebagainya, getting set up. Kita okey lah, 10 minutes tu kita anggap sebagai, uh, kita given lah, ha, itu kira something that you can sort of, uh, we can we can excuse you. But at least you must be on for uh, 50 minutes. C, na, memastikan mencapai nisbah NTK tu sekurang-kurang 80%, which means penumpuan tanpa kerja lain, quote angkut tanpa kerja lain, uh, at least seharusnya 40, uh, minimalnya 40 minutes lah. So kita bukanlah kata you have to pay attention 100, of course you have to pay attention 100, 100%, you don't do any multitasking but come on, we are working, sometimes something come up, we have got to do uh, some other multitasking work, kita allow. Tapi uh, jangan buat itu for the whole of the duration, there is some percentage yang kita allow di situ. Yeah? And then jangan lupa to shut it off. Uh, kalau you, you forget to shut it off, Webex akan track sebagai uh, you are doing multitasking. So uh, proses memperolehi sajil kadar ini akan diumumkan tidak lama lagi. Uh, we are still working on it. Uh, bagaimana tuan-tuan dan puan-puan akan menggunakan pakai NPK ini uh, dan daripada manakah tuan-tuan dan puan-puan boleh me, me, apa, ber, uh, mendapat sijil kehadiran yang sebenar. Yeah, this NPK is not sijil kehadiran sebenar. It's just uh, not, nota ke pengesahan kehadiran sahaja. Dia tidak boleh dianggap sebagai satu sijil kehadiran. So ini contoh, contoh uh, nota pengesahan pengesahan kehadiran uh, yang yang ada di sini. So collect this as much as possible, and then uh, apabila kita di HQ telah dapat uh, gambaran yang jelas mengenai dengan flow dan sebagainya kita akan sampaikan pada tuan-tuan dan puan-puan. But your job now is to make sure you collect this uh, as much as possible. Yeah? So you can see dia uh, very simple, dia ada English NBM because kita tahu bahawa our, uh, our audience ada juga yang akan attend. Uh, audience yang tidak menggunakan pakai NPK ni, dia just for the sake of have, provide, apa, getting a uh, uh, certificate sajalah. Yeah? Dia tak ada value beyond that, yeah? dia just participation value. Tetapi untuk tuan-tuan dan puan-puan JPPKK yang nak menggunakan pakai ini sebagai uh, training, uh, you, there is value. So you collect it and there will be a time when you can reimburse it dalam bentuk uh, a proper uh, sijil. Okay, next. Ada lagi apa bawah tu? Habislah. Okay, so itu dia. dia basically, uh, apa, bagaimana kita nak memastikan bahawa tuan-tuan dan puan-puan uh, selain daripada memba- membela- mempelajari apa yang ada pada webinar ini dapat some form of certification. Uh, Dari kata lain, collect this currency note. NPK ni uh, uh, dianggap sebagai a currency note. Uh, when you have enough, you can reimburse for uh, something. Tokens, uh, you can reimburse for something. So that's the whole idea. So saya harap penjelasan saya ni dapat memberi gambaran yang lebih jelas. Uh, uh, so make sure masa registration tu, you tulis you punya identity as uh, nama dengan jelas. Tak nak nama fancy-fancy dan sebagainya, dia akan menimbulkan masalah 
kemudian apabila you get your um, NPK ni nanti. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, kita dah complete two session pagi ni dan uh, the next session will be setting up your digital classroom at home to enable online learning. I will moderate dengan Professor uh, Karim yeah, from USM. So, Assalamualaikum. Uh, uh, ada question? I have received email. Thank you for attending course but nothing. Okay, belum lagi lah. Itu kita, benda tu akan kita kena sort out, kena ada cutting point, you know, siapa yang tu, yang kita hantar yang berjaya saja. Yang lain kita dapat hanya, uh, yang ni, ini normal, normal courtesy reply sahaja daripada kita. Uh, the NPK you will get dengan gambar NPK itu tadi macam mana yang ditunjuk di dalam uh, slide itu tadi ya yeah? okey so kota apa thank you very much uh, we will see you all at 3 o'clock ya yeah? insyaallah uh, untuk the, the third session uh, of our webinar assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh uh, terima kasih